Welcome back to Auto Scoop with your host, Adam Goldfine. Welcome back to Auto Scoop. I'm Adam Goldfine. We are live at the Atlanta Dragway. We're talking to Tom Hammonds, who really, f- from my perspective, is such an interesting character in the sport because we all know you from the basketball. You know, right. so here we are sitting with an NBA player and saying, okay, here's a 12 year NBA star. Right. What are you doing? <laughs> I, I, I just got to know. I mean, I get that question all the time. All right, so, so Sometimes I, mean, I don't know what I'm doing. What happened? Did you get the bug? Did you always have it as a kid? Well, I've, I've been racing for a long time. A lot of people don't know this, but I've been racing probably for about 15, 16 years, ever since I was in, in, in high school. Okay. And, and any, anytime I can get my hands on my grandma's car or my grandpa's truck or whatever, I was trying to race it. So. And you have uh, the tickets, I'm sure, to prove it. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go that far. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I, I was friends with the local police, so I, I leave it at that. But uh, I don't. I don't condone street racing. So, so please, please get that out of. Out and of isn't that one of the important things that we want to, you know, talk about with drag racing? Was the whole idea of making it safe and bringing right. it, in, you know, uh, where it's regulated on these tracks. And safety is obviously a paramount concern when you're when you're on the track and driving. It, exactly. I mean, NHRA has a program called Operation Street Legal, and uh, it, it, it's to, it's designed to get the kids off of the street and, and, and onto the drag strip where safety is the utmost concern, and, and they can learn the proper way. So right. that's what that's what's important. You know, and drag racing is involved even beyond that. I know that you're involved with the Marine Corps in trying to speak out to youth. I mean, how does that tie in with your role? You know, uh, as a well, we started a program this year, or actually last year, called the Race for Achievement Program, and it's designed for around high school and middle school kids across the country. And we use our race program to do that. And uh, it's based on certain criteria. I want to reward the, the youth across the country that are doing well in school. We okay. spend a lot of time uh, talking about the kids that aren't doing well. Right. But what about the kids that are doing well? We want to reward those kids that are doing well. You, ha- you have to meet certain criteria. Uh-huh. Uh, you got to at least have a B average. Uh, I believe you can make a B. You might not be able to make an A, but if you work hard right. enough, you can sure. make a B. Uh, you can't have any in-school suspensions, uh, no unexcused absences, and, then, and the kids that meet that criteria, we recognize those kids in front of the whole school, bring them down, and uh, uh, they come they come out for, to, to, for, uh, as, a, as a guest of ours at the racetrack on Friday and Saturday, and the, Marine, the 6th District U.S. Marine Corps got involved in our program the, for this race, and we're, we're very glad to have them. We want, we, want to make, we want to make this a national program. That's awesome, because you're really reaching out to the local community and getting the community involved, and then also giving them a chance to introduce them to the sport. Right. Right. Well, that, that's that's our that's our future is our youth, and, and like I said, we spend a lot of time talking about the kids that are doing well. But what about the kids that, that are doing well? Sure. Sure. And we want to recognize those kids. We want to we want to incentivize the kids that aren't doing well to uh, to, to aspire, strive to be right? better exactly and we want to monitor that progress as it as the years, years, years come G- give me a kind of the transition okay going from the nba into drag racing right w- what would be the one or two things that you found helpful you know as an nba star that help you in the drag racing because i'm looking at you going he's at a disadvantage if i'm lining up next to him i got him i mean you're, you're probably too big and clunky inside the car right. you're, you're definitely way too much and the weight's going to be a factor as you're heading down the track so so how do you compensate I weigh a little bit more than the average pro stock racer. The average pro stock racer is probably five foot five, uh, like but jockey. I don't. I don't think that. Yeah, but like a jogger, horse jogger. I don't think they could fit in my car. They might not be able to reach the pedals. Right. But they have to have a booster seat, and I don't have to have a. I mean, my my seat is actually okay. notched in the car, and uh, my Chevrolet Cobalt is made made for me. Takes my height in consideration. We have to make it extremely light. Uh, I mean, because that's the key. That way, when we can put the weight in our Chevrolet Cobalt where we want it, and it, and and, it, and when we're able to do that it doesn't make a difference if I'm 240 pounds or 150 pounds because the car doesn't know, know the difference. Do you find that your reaction times as, as a professional athlete help you? I mean, when you're sitting there and you're watching the Christmas tree, do you feel like you have an edge? Well, I, I think, the, I, I don't know about that. I think uh, just being able to concentrate uh, at the moment, I think really helps me. And I think I, that correlates between professional basketball and, and, and drag racing. And uh, hopefully I can be the last man standing on Sunday. That's my goal. What sort of preparation do you do? I mean, you, you have this series that goes on from city to city to city. So you guys are on the road a lot, you know, and you have a whole crew, you know, it's a, it's a team sport, you know, yeah. very much the same way. So how do you prepare mentally and then also physically uh, for the competition? Well, a lot of preparation is done at the shop. I mean, that's the key. I mean, uh, we, okay. we come to the racetrack, that's the glory coming to the racetrack and run up and down the quarter mile, but a lot of preparation is done actually at the track. We're one of the few teams that have our own engine program. Okay. And uh, uh, just, just a lot of the man hours that we put forth at the racetrack is, is what's key to being able to come out here and compete at a high, at a high level. As a driver, do you get involved in the engine specs and the weight? And you, you yes, I'm, a, I'm very adept in, in, in running the engine program. I, yeah. uh, I have an engine, build, engine builder who's Jimmy Oliver, who in my opinion is one of the best in the country. Uh, he's, he's taught me an awful lot about, about the engines, and uh, I'm learning, and uh, we're, we're, we're an up-and-coming team, and, and I look forward to what, what the future holds for us. 
Well, you know, if you were speaking to the kids out there and trying to get them encouraged to, to come out in the sport and let's say take part in the, uh, the youth program, what, what kind of message would you have for them? Well, the, my main message is, is that you can be and do anything you want to do in life. Right. You have to be willing to work hard for it. A lot of, I think our youth are willing to, uh, especially today, they, they, they think things are going to be handed to them. It's not going to be like that. But you can do Definitely. anything in life. I was preaching this message before President Barack Obama became the President of the United States. Uh, and, and you can do it as long as you're willing to put forth the effort it takes to be successful. And what's nice is to watch you be successful in so many different areas. You know, so I mean, you're, you're proof positive yourself in how you're leading your life. Well, God has blessed me to be able to do things in my life that I enjoy doing. And right. uh, uh, I've worked hard for it. Don't get me wrong. Nothing has been handed to me. And, I, and as an, I'm an example to the youth when we go out and speak to the Race for Achievement program at these high schools and middle schools is the fact that you can do it as long as you're willing, as long as you're willing to do it. What's the fastest you've ever driven? Uh, the fastest I've ever driven my pro stock car, uh, we had an event in Houston a couple of weeks ago. I uh, went 6.58 seconds at 210 miles an hour. We go zero to 100 in two seconds. So two, two seconds. seconds. <laughs> How many horsepower in your car? About peak horsepower, about 1,330. I mean, think about like the most expensive car, let's say you buy, you know, um, from a dealership, you know, 300 horsepower, maybe 350 horsepower, and you got 1,300 horsepower. We, we, might make, we might make 300 in one cylinder. Oh my God. Right. And so, so you like thrown back? I mean, are the G-Force is just incredible? I'm, I'm thrown back. I mean, it, it, it's, it's like, a, like a, you, 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 I let my foot off the clutch, it's like somebody hits you in the back with a sledgehammer. Really? So, uh, yeah, so that, that's the fun part. But the real fun part is when I pull the parachutes and I'm getting ready to stop. Because you get the other, you get the other momentum. At the same well, time, not right? necessarily that, but I know what I'm getting ready to stop. Okay. Well, listen, <laughs> it was very nice to speak to you. We Thank wish you. you a lot of luck. We're going to be here watching the races as we come back. We'll be back with a whole bunch more of Auto Scoop coming up. Don't go anywhere. I'm Adam Goldfine, CW69.